Hello. Have you ever noticed any of those signs in the crowd? Yeah, yeah, oh, just the ones at the front. Normally, can I have your dartboard, can I have your darts, can I have your flights? That's, that's a normal, get, will you marry me? That kind of thing. And you haven't said yes to any of them yet? No, they're all fellas. <laughs> you don't want to say yes then. How are you feeling? I'm a lot better now, thank you, Paul. Yeah, a lot better. Um, and now tonight, you are normally the crowd favourite. You are the one everyone gets up and cheers. Uh, you're up against Kyle. Um, he's probably going to be the crowd favourite. How do you handle that? I think it'll be a mixed mixed crowd, to be honest with you. I think it'll be 50-50 tonight. Um, the only way to, 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 to quiet the crowd is to play well. Because most people have come to watch a good game, you know, whether it be football, cricket, golf, whatever. I mean, most people will cheer a good game. So that's the only way to shut the crowd. Now, how important is it to bring these bring darts all around the world? Well, it's massively important. I mean, I'm a, I'm a major shareholder of the PDC, <laughs> so it's majorly important for me because that's my retirement fund. Um, it's, it's just great to be involved. It's great to be, you know, travelling. I mean, today we, we sat on the balcony again looking at the ocean and it's, it's just unbelievable. It really is. You know, it's the middle of winter and we're sunbathing. How good is that? Now, don't get any better. Perth has treated you really well. You haven't lost a game here, so you want to come back again, again, won't you? I do. I want to play tomorrow if I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sammy's in final. I'd love to win it again. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, it's a big achievement for me just to be involved in this at my age now. So I'm, I want to win. You're not that old. Thanks for coming and good luck tonight. I feel it. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you. Yeah, Phil Taylor sunbaking. That is something I would like to see on the shores of Perth here. All right, we want to get some reaction now. Paul Gow caught up with Kyle Anderson a little earlier. Can't get any better than this, Kyle. You're in your hometown. You're playing against one of the best ever players. How do you feel? I'm feeling good, mate. I'm comfortable. Um, as you said, been with family and friends all day. It's uh, I can't wait. And how did you spend the day? You know, in anticipation of tonight, you've got 4,000 people and they're going to be right behind you. Um, just another day for me, you know. Um, spend time with family, watch some footy as you do. Um, it's no different to being home any other time. It's another game for the night and I'm, I'm feeling comfortable tonight. And you'll go into this obviously against the best player, you know, in, in our era. How do you feel about that? With, with him, you know, you've got one of your idols just standing there. I've played field twice before. I've got a hide and twice before, so... Um, no, it's, I'm feeling confident. I'm throwing well. Um, if I play well enough, I, can, I might be able to get over him. Let's see how it goes, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling real confident. All right, mate. We'll be all right behind you. Uh, best of luck. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, mate. He's the 16-time world champion who continues his title defence tonight. Phil the Power Taylor faces the hometown hero, Kyle Anderson. events and all part of the PDC's World Series of Darts and for the thousands in attendance and the millions joining us around the world, welcome to the great Perth, Australia! Time to meet the players. Ladies and gentlemen, your opportunity now to welcome home your very own from Perth, Australia, the original Carl
And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Stoke-on-Trent, England, it's time to meet the legend. He's the reigning and defending Perth Darts Master. And the record-breaking, history-making, 16-time, the champion of the world. One of you is going to be bringing the power behind the mics. Here's Stuart Pike and Paul Nicholson. Well, what a chance for Kyle Anderson to etch his name in Australian darting history. Anderson, who has made a real name for himself over the last 12 or 18 months, lost to Taylor twice at the Sydney Darts Masters in the last couple of years. But this is a different player, a different person back home in Perth. I'm hoping to cause a huge upset against the defending champion here at the Perth Darts Masters. Anderson get off to a flyer. He's got a real chance against Taylor. Despite his 6-1 win against the Kiwi, Craig Caldwell looked a little rusty at times, struggled on the doubles. What a chance here for Kyle Anderson to make a big name for himself in Australian darts. He's got an absolutely enormous chance tonight, uh, but he is going to have to get out the blocks. He's done the first job, which is win the bullseye. And, you know, 12 months on from when he made the semi finals at the Sydney Masters, what has Kyle done? He's stepped up. He made the world match play, played a fantastic game against the eventual uh, finalist, James Wade, but he came out of that performance covered in roses and glory because he played really, really well. Well, he did. He, 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 was, he was possibly two or three darts away from being in charge of that game. Two or three missed darts at doubles and Wade took control as James Wade does. And, of course, James Wade went on to beat Phil Taylor wow. and then lost the final to Michael Van Gerwen, the world match play case. You don't know. Millions watching around the world to this World Series triple header. Perth... Sydney and Auckland, the World Match Play, the second biggest tournament after the World Championship. And it was won by Michael Van Gerwen in Blackpool in July. Phil Taylor had won it time after time after time. He was denied the 16th match play title by James Wade. Kyle Anderson here, that's a great dart. He hits a lot of 180s, you know, Kyle Anderson. He does hit a lot of 180s. Speaking to Kyle, at length over the last few days since coming to Perth he said he was really really nervous about this tournament being his backyard he felt like he had something to prove but I think after last night being involved in that real tussle with Stephen Bunting he doesn't feel nervous anymore and looking at the footage tonight he doesn't look nervous to me he looks determined so a chance for Taylor to pinch the opening leg and how many times have we said that over the years and how many times has Phil Taylor done that over the years he's going to get a dart at tops I thought Phil was going to hit that there was just something in the air but I was wrong 48 for Kyle he started this leg he'll want this tops and he's got it that's a perfect shot that's the thought you want to settle the nerves if there was any there He's going to feel really good now. Well, do you know what was most impressive about, for me, about Kyle Anderson's performance against Stephen Bunting in the first round is that how he held it together. Because he raced into a 4-1 lead, he, he missed darts to go 5-2 up, he was in total control. Bunting, of course, got it back to force a deciding leg. Both had darts to win the match in that last leg before One Kyle Anderson 25. did. But uh, he looks good here, doesn't he? He does look good. 
He looks like he's got an air of confidence about him. And if you're going to beat Phil Taylor, you've got to beat him when he's not at his best. Because if he plays his best game, he's almost unbeatable. Well, he's already he's already stole the darts. Look at this. What a chance here for Kyle Anderson in this second leg. We'll have to switch now. Could do with a treble. Nice. Good dart from Kyle Anderson, who from nowhere, in just seven or eight months, has got himself in the top 50 in the world. He took the gamble of committing himself to play full-time on the PDC circuit, which meant living wow. in the UK, in the Midlands, in Nottingham, while his family were back here in Perth. Heck of a sacrifice, but it's been worth it. Well, that's the word. Simon's done it, I've done it, Kyle has now done the same. He's made that big trip back to the UK, and it's about that word sacrifice. And now, it's a different kind of sacrifice that he has to do to take the next step. It's sacrificing time with your family, your friends, wow. you spend your time in the hotels, on the flights, get yourself in the tournament. He's got himself in the best possible position to kick on, and now he's got to do that because he's never going to have a better opportunity. He's young, you know, he's confident. Um, I've never met uh, someone much uh, more confident than Kyle Anderson. He just believes in his, his ability and he believes his destiny is to be a fantastic Aboriginal advocate. No, naive, I think you have to say, with the last dart there for Kyle Anderson trying to leave a finish and hit a single five and didn't but look at this 147 but Anderson with that last visit never really gave himself a chance he's now going to rely on Phil Taylor missing now it remains to be seen whether that little tactical shot from Kyle will get into Phil Taylor's head he'll have done it to try and mess him up a bit that's not a good life for Phil Taylor. This is a great shot if he hits it. And maybe that seven Call that Kyle hit was a little tactic. He's going to have two dots at tops for 2 0. Great lie. Great lie to the right. And he went to the left. What a chance. Two dots missed at tops for 2 0. Phil's got nine. That's the hard one. Double four. There it is, right in the middle. Kyle has to save himself. He had a chance. But on this occasion, he didn't take it. All's not lost, though. 1-1, one, one, and it's on the darts. But you know, Paul, for me, those are the chances that, that Kyle Anderson really has to take if he's going to challenge Phil Taylor. And two darts, big moment, fluffed his lines. Got to hold it together now, but that was... That was a great chance for 2-0. It was a wonderful chance, especially when his first start was a fantastic guide to actually nick that leg against the darts. Shane Burgess famously once said that you do get chances against Phil Taylor, which are 161s and 164s. But on this occasion, 52 is a monumental opportunity. And unfortunately, he didn't take it. And he knows it. He's made a poor start to this third leg, I think. He's, he's actually weighing on his mind. He knows that was a great chance to steal a march on Taylor. 60. Sydney Darts Masters 2013. Taylor, Kyle Anderson was very much an unknown quantity. Taylor won 6-1. 60. And then Anderson went to the World Championship, hit that historic nine dart at the Alexandra Palace, and then reached the semi-finals in Sydney on the World Series Tour last year. Taylor won that 10-4 comfortably in the end, but all part of the learning curve for Kyle Anderson. And at the moment, this to be a harsh darting lesson for Anderson. What's very interesting, Stuart, is that this time last year when uh, we were going into the uh, Sydney Masters, Kyle Anderson was talking about coming back to Australia and uh, not going back to England to play the Pro Tour. One tournament changed his life, the Sydney Masters last year. He went back to the UK, played so much better on the Pro Tour over the last 12 months, had a very good World Championships, qualified for the World Match Play, and now we can't wait to get back to the UK to play more tournaments. Because it looks like he will be going to the World Grand Prix in Dublin this year as well. Who yeah. will require a of seven. achievement to qualify for these big tournaments from a standing start, really. Taylor to break. Game and two off. Of and that second Phil leg Taylor. and those chances that Full Kyle Anderson missed now. Game on. Looking to be important. Kyle will be very disappointed with that. By winning the bullseye in the back room, he would love the fact that he'd be throwing first in the majority of the legs that they're going to play on that stage. 
and he basically gifted Phil Taylor the advantage there and the look in Phil Taylor's eyes you just see it sometimes wow. it doesn't look like he wants to give Kyle an inch tonight well I know you're very good friends with Kyle Anderson but he's after your job mate he wants to represent Australia at the World wow. Cup of Darts in Frankfurt wow. next June that means knocking you out of it well a lot of people think that he should have got my spot this year um, well if he could have double 18 better than me maybe he should have had it <laughs> but uh, wow. as long as I'm above him in the rankings I'm going to be pulling on that Aussie jersey that's for certain but uh, if I have to surrender my place to Kyle it'll be because of effort and uh, results and if he gets it I'll wish him all the best yeah fair enough what a well, good response here from Kyle Anderson just like the way he, he goes about his business he hasn't started as well as he would have hoped and he certainly hasn't scored as well he as we we become used to 83. over the last year or so but Phil Taylor is off the pace as well let's make no mistake Taylor not his best so I'm sure Kyle Anderson can sense well, right. he's got a great 40. opportunity here 140 140 140 possible 11 data to break straight back well the perfect repost to losing your uh, losing your throw Stuart is to break back straight away perfect bounce back ability and let's see what he's made of because Taylor's left 78 so he's gonna have to go for trouble 19 now 62 gotta go single 12 took the gamble double 13 55 it was a gamble for the trouble 12 but he hit it he had the biggest segment for double 13 and he's missed another chance to break back with Phil left 78 single 20 now double top to hold Game there it is, is. cruel cruel game isn't it Kyle Anderson could easily have been 2-0 up he could easily have been 3-1 in front Kyle Anderson but Phil Taylor dishing out the darting Sixth punishment and Taylor leads 3-1 and he just has the uncanny ability of knocking the stuffing and the confidence and the belief out of his opponents that's absolutely right Stuart that's what Eric Bristol taught him in the late 80s it was about bullying your opponent and when you get chances Six take eight. them especially when they've missed chances um, oh Phil Taylor God. has taught God everybody two very good lessons uh, in his darting career one kick your opponent when they're down A 180 from Kyle that's what he needs he needs a lot more of that to get the curl involved and that could have an effect on this match as we were saying, Phil has a very famous, famous analogy for big time darts. And it's something I actually can't see on live TV. <laughs> but it's a brilliant, brilliant rule. It's basically about you can't practice being in certain situations. Look what Kyle's found now. He's back. That's that deficit response. Back to back for Aces from the Aussie star who left 81 after 9 in the last leg, but missed a dart to level the match at 2-all. Surely, Power he'll get this back to 3-2 from here. 81 it is. Won't go the same route this time, because Phil's not on it, but 81 double 16, he's coming 65. back. He wants to be 3-2 going into the break. Oh. Well, he wants to be 3-3 going into the break. Oh, he should be in front. But this is pressure from Taylor. Well, wow. it's the ultimate pressure from Taylor. Carl oh, Anderson could easily be in front in this game. Well, that's a great leg. I have to say, showed a lot Ladies of character. And a very best of order when a the bit of bottle. Thank um, you. No little amount that's of skill in that leg. 3 2. Lots of skill indeed. He'll be really, really pleased with the way he plays in that leg. And I get the feeling the crowd is starting to get involved too. I really do. This is quite a volatile atmosphere for the power, and let's see how he handles it. Party's up. 96. Phil is used to having a lot of the crowd behind him, but they're all behind this man, Kyle Anderson. Wow. 140's okay. Missed two darts to go 2 0 up, Kyle Anderson. Missed another dart to make it 2 2, but. Well, fancy his chances maybe here of making it three all. Well, he's going to have to mirror that shot. Another 140 here will put him in the driving seat. It's a perfect start. 
going to shift to the left here to see if he can see more of the bed. Tun will do, keeps him on level pegging. Got a really nice, fluent, flowing, throwing style. It's the kind of throw that will stand the test of time. It's straight up and straight down. It's a brilliant thing to watch. Kyle Anderson has a lot of people who have flown from all over the country for this particular tournament. The support he has had over the last few days has been monumental. Yeah. Inundated with messages of support, Kyle Anderson. After his win over Stephen Bunting and before this match here with Phil Taylor, great local support. As it should be, parties out. Cheer, cheer on the hometown boy. Absolutely, I mean, this is Kyle's hometown. Home advantage, why not? Be the same if I was playing in Melbourne or um, when Simon plays in Sydney. There are backyards. And I get booed everywhere I go, Stuart. <laughs> Even my friends like to boo me. 28. It's looking we'll good for Taylor in this leg, though. We'll make an exception in the commentary box. <laughs> 101 for Taylor. Six darts if he needs them. Double 16 it is for 4-2. Four 4-2 two. Four two it is. And Kyle doesn't get the 3-3. Three three. It's 4-2 to the power. Yeah, clinical as well. And uh, Phil Taylor having a word with uh, Russ Bray, the referee. I wonder if that's about the partisan home crowd. We shall see. But Taylor here leads 4-2. But Kyle Anderson... The latest Aussie darting star is right in this quarter-final. Race to eight, Taylor, 4-2 in front. <laughs> well, terrific game so far between Phil Taylor, the defending champion here in Perth, and the hometown hero, Kyle Anderson. Should really be level at three apiece. Anderson missing darts in two legs against Taylor and has paid the price. Phil picking up the pace, averaging over 100 in the last three legs to take control of this quarter final. Next on the World Series Tour, next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Sydney. Michael Van Gerwen against James Wade. Our first semi-final here in Perth. Phil Taylor or Kyle Game Anderson. On. Against Adrian Lewis or Gary Anderson. In the second wow. semi. On Sunday. Here at the HBF Stadium. Well, Phil is in control here. 4-2 up. He's in the same position that James Wade was in against Peter Wright earlier. James reeled up four consecutive legs. Phil will be wanting to get off that stage as soon as possible. I don't think he likes this part as an atmosphere. Because he's, like you say, Stuart, he's not used to it. But I think Kyle should have really riled them up in the break. You know, get them get them quite vocal, get them loud. Because he really, really does play his best darts when he's got that support with him. 98. Kyle Anderson will be also hoping that he will have done enough to get through to the World Series finals in Scotland. November the 21st and 22nd in Glasgow. It will be a terrific couple of days for sure. It certainly will. And unfortunately Kyle is not actually going to be playing in the Sydney Masters this year. And he's not going to be playing in Auckland, which is a bit of a disappointment. He's chosen to go and see family in Queensland and I fully respect that. Kyle's a huge family man, it means a lot to him, and about his culture and his family, it means everything to him. Darts does come second or third to that, but I'm sure he'll do, en he'll do enough to get there, and it'll be great to see him in Glasgow. He'll be well supported by all the guys up there in Glasgow, for sure. Wow, well, yet again, the setup shot from Phil Taylor, for me, is the difference between the two players, it's what's done the damage. He's given himself another chance here, Taylor, for what would be a double break of throw. But again, the 140 setup shot has opened the door for Taylor. Taylor has 70. Now, what's he going to do? 12 or 20? 12 it is for tops for 5 2. 5 2 it is. And that's a real kick in the stones to Kyle Anderson. And for the second time that Taylor has done exactly that. Hit the 140 and then the 70 out. And Kyle Anderson now, it's a long way back. 
the match may well have been lost in the early stages but Taylor's finishing which has been of a, a real concern for him over the last 12 months or so has been spot on when it has really mattered in this match but the difference I maintain has been Taylor's setup shot which have put pressure on Anderson and then Taylor has followed it up by winning the leg I couldn't agree with you more there Stuart and I think if you look at his doubles percentage for instance which is currently at 45 percent that's not setting the world on fire but it's the timing of certain shots which have actually got him in this position and that is true Phil Taylor like 57. Kyle's going to have to kick really, really quickly. He's going to have to do something that Michael Van Gerwen does a lot, which is have that three or four length spell to really get him back in this game. And Kyle does have that little kick. He's actually played on the Pro Tour against the likes of Van Gerwen and uh, people like Raymond Van Barneveld and had kicking styles like that. So he does have it in his game. He's just got to get that one thing to kick him on. A big finish, a couple of 180s like he did in the first half. So we've got to see what he's made of now. One hundred. May not be enough. A hundred. Phil Taylor. Down at number three in the world. Gary Anderson has taken his spot at number two. Of course, Michael Van Gerwen overhauled him as world number one a little while ago. I wonder, Stuart, when was the last time Phil Taylor was number three in the world? Wow, I know a couple of guys who might know that. Our spotter, Richard Ashdown. Possibly Andy Scott, who's the statistician for the, the PDC. If you guys know at home, don't be afraid to tweet us at official PDC or at Perth Darts. Yeah, let us We'd know. love to know. Taylor with another one, this time a 106. His finishing has been really, really good. Two top plus finishes and... Three out of four on tops for Philip Taylor. Uh, in charge of this quarterfinal. And, you know, we talked about the the crowd factor. The crowd has fallen silent because of the way Phil Taylor's playing. Well, the great Sid Waddell once said, "You could hear a blob of vinegar drop on a chip. You could you could hear a blob of cheese drop on a Parmigiana in Australia right now because the crowd are silent. And that's what Phil Taylor has done. He has governed this game." Uh, he's basically done exactly what James Wade did to Peter Wright earlier. Kyle needs more of that. He needs a lot more of that. 51, 180 so far here in Perth. 2015. Will it be 52? Not quite, but Phil's going to be happy about being 6 2 up. That is the only stat he's looking at right now. He can't wait to get to 8. The only person who can stop him is Kyle Anderson. It's not often you see a nun with white wrap around sunglasses and a handlebar moustache. 100. Kyle will require 100. Stay in it. Double 16. Beautifully done. In a rhythm, when he gets in a rhythm, that's what he can do. That was a very natural yeah. shot, wasn't it, Stuart? Unlike the 81 from earlier, he had to readjust for the double 13. I think on this occasion, he knew he was going to hit a 10, and he knew he was going to go for uh, the double 16 on this occasion. And like you say, the rhythm of that shot was much, much better. And wow. that is the first step to the comeback. Well, Carl Anderson, as we mentioned, rocketed into the top 50 in the world, number 43 at the moment. Where, where do you think, potentially, he could be in 12 months' time? Well, if you look at players who have really, really good spells, like Stephen Bunting, I remember Mervyn King when he first joined the PDC, and uh, he managed to get in the top 10 in the first wow. couple of years, which is a, a phenomenal achievement. I think for Kyle, a realistic ambition by the end of this year is possibly top 24. Well, he'll qualify for the World Championship by merit. And that was his only aim at the start of the year. So everything else that he has achieved and is achieving is a bonus. But certainly top 32 in the next couple of months wow. is the aim for Kyle Anderson. But yeah, I agree. I, I, I think if he sticks at it, he can achieve whatever he wants to. But it's going to be really difficult for him with the family being back in Perth and they're not going to move back to the UK whatever happens so 
it's striking that balance, isn't it? It is striking that balance, and it, I'm sure it's really wow. difficult for Kyle having his family so far away, and the only thing that really will make it worthwhile is if he's successful. So he'll want to do everything in his power to basically make make it worth not seeing his child grow up and spending time with his, his partner. Well, he won't go for the, the double 19. He splits it six to leave double 16. And Taylor here looking to go with him one leg of Game victory. And there we have it again. He's finishing percentage 47%, up to 50% now. Success rate seven out of 14, and that's much more like it from Taylor. It's looking very ominous for Kyle, isn't it? He's now got to go five perfect legs to beat Phil Taylor. How many people can say that they've won five consecutive legs from the greatest star player ever? Michael Van Gerwen did it once at my head. But that's the repost from Mr. Power. 177. So he'll be looking for a nine daughter to finish this match. Well, Michael Van Gerwen, seven perfect darts. In his first round victory over David Platt, he was thinking about it, wasn't he, Taylor? Certainly was. The best time to hit a nine daughter is definitely the last leg of a the match. There has been a, a nine daughter in the Southern Hemisphere, only one of them by Mervyn King in the South African Masters against James Wade a few years back. I don't think there's another televised record of one. Taylor's got to go downstairs now. Another one of those will be good. And he gets it, leaves 132, so he's in command of this leg. If Kyle can't put some pressure on this shot, need some lipstick. There it is. Another one will be brilliant. 100. Phil, you require 132. Bull root. So a chance here for Kyle. To keep this game alive. 86 it is for Kyle Anderson. Can he? Well, a loose one. Top of 15 maybe for tops. That'll be the target. Not to be on this occasion. Taylor's coming back. He caught weight again to the hockey. Really quick. Double four it is for the match. Game Double shot. four it is. One dart. That's all. Phil Taylor needed. And uh, the hometown hero, Kyle Anderson, is out. The defending champion here in Perth, relentless. Taylor through to another semi-final. Uh, great performance as well. 100 average from Taylor, and he wins 8-3 to go through to the last four. Coming up could be the match of the night. Adrian Lewis against the world champion, Gary Anderson, next on the stage in Perth. was going to lift off here at HBF Stadium as the hometown hero Kyle Anderson took on another crowd favourite defending his title, world number one, Phil the Power Taylor. Kyle Anderson, he started with an air of confidence taking out the first leg. He looked calm and in the mood but had problems finishing the number one seed though. In the lead, the original fought his, his way back but he just couldn't find his rhythm and the final score was 8-3. What a match that was. Of course, disappointment for Kyle Anderson but you've got to talk me through those numbers there, Rod. Well, Phil Taylor's average of nine, just under the 100, 99 and a bit. Uh, that's typical Phil Taylor. That's leg-on-leg -leg pressure he puts on people. Carl will be a little bit disappointed with the 93. 180s, sometimes Phil Taylor hits five or six, other times he don't. But the 140s is where the biggest difference is. The 53% on doubles for Phil Taylor is exceptionally good. Anything above 50 you're really happy with. I don't think Carl really come out all guns are blazing in the early part of the game. That's where he lost it. If you let Phil Taylor get in front of you, then you start playing Phil Taylor and thinking about who you're playing. And I think that's what happened with Carl. It was a, it was a tough cookie after that. He was indeed. All right, let's get some reaction from the number one seed, Phil Taylor. He's a poor gal. 
Now, they call you Phil the power tailor. It should be Phil the pressure tailor. You just put the pressure on from the get-go. I thought Kyle might be under pressure tonight. I've been his own, own turf, you know what I mean? And, and the crowd, were good. we were on his side at the beginning. But I, I thought maybe just try and match him at the beginning. I, th I thought, I th you know, he's, he's a good player. <laughs> he really is a good player. And at the end of it, when I shook his hand, I said, you're going you're gonna to improve by this. And I think he is. He's going to be, be a better player by this. And that's what it takes for Kyle, doesn't it? It's, it he's got to go through these steps yeah. and, and play players of your calibre to get better. He, he does. He does it week in and week out. And he's, he's just missing by little fractions. He's, he's a little bit... If it was a graph a little bit like this, where he'll be like this soon, he'll, he will be scoring and he'll be finishing consistently. He's a good player, Kyle is, and he's going to get better. Trust me. Now, now your own if game there... If I was going to sponsor somebody, I think he'd be the one I'd be looking at. He'd be in for that, I'm sure. Mm. Um, your own game, did, did they come out well tonight? Steady, steady. Started listening to a few jibes in the crowd. But, <laughs> but that, you are going to do, do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, a little bit of a sweater, which I don't normally sweat, but he made me, he made me, you know, made me work for it. And, you know, you're here in Australia, that this is now six times, so you still haven't been beaten in Perth. Thank you. So real estate for you in Perth, you just love it here. Oh, I'd, love a, I'd love one of them uh, houses on the beach <laughs> in Perth, trust me. What a, what a place to live. You know, you come out the hotel, turn right or turn left, and the houses down there. We're taking photographs of houses, believe it or not, you know. Oh. And it's, it's beautiful, it really is, you know. They're a million pound plus, so that's, the, that's my ambition now, to live in Perth. Well, you keep winning one of these, you, you'll be Those right. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, well, you can do that here. Mm. Now, you, uh, you know, you, you're always thereabouts, you know, with, with every game you go to. You're number three in the world now, it, you know. You've got to work your way back. Is that little bits and pieces at a time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I'm, yeah, I've, I mean, I've had my troubles. I mean, I've had my personal life. It's been up and down. People don't realise that you do have a personal life, yep. and, and things do. You know what I mean? You get older, and things change. Of course, they do. Things drop off, and your teeth go funny, and your hair drops out. So, it's just a matter of coping with it and, and readjusting. That's what you've got to do, you know, and get ready for the next one. So, my ambition this year is to get ready for the world, mainly more than anything. Is to do well in these, send little messages out that Phil's still here. You know, you've still yeah. got to, you, you know, you've got to be a Costa Zoo, you've got to get stuck in, and you've got to put a little message out there, ready, it, for, ready for December. It, now, I've only met you this week, but you've been such a gentleman. You haven't mentioned the ashes. You're such a gentleman. I watched the ashes, I did honestly. I blinked and I missed it, it was all <laughs> over. No, it, it, was, it was a bit of a hiccup. England did well this year. The bowling was fantastic. The, the batting off, off Australia wasn't the best, to be honest with you. But they'll be back. I mean, again, they'll learn by it and they'll, they'll come back in about five or six years. <laughs> Mate, thanks very much. You rest up and we'll see We've you again tomorrow. We've got the rugby now. We've got the rugby. We have got the rugby. So you can get your own back. <laughs> thanks, mate. And we've got a good team as well. You have. So no excuses for England. <laughs> thanks, mate. Good on you, Bob. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Yes, yeah, the always gracious and charming Phil Taylor. I think he's just struck up a best friendship there with Paul Gow. I'm a little bit jealous. Now, let's take a look at the standings here. Yeah, the standings tonight, as we can see, Phil Taylor, he has scored himself a spot in the semi-finals. All of that action will be taking place right here at HBS Stadium tomorrow night, alongside with Michael Van Gerwen and James Wade, who will also be in a semi-final. A semi-final that we can't wait to see. You know, Phil mentioned it there. He said he's going to dust himself off and get ready to talk about the semi-finals. But uh, does he really need to dust himself off? He's doing really well. Yeah, I mean, Phil, as he said, he's had a, a few problems. But the biggest problem with Phil and any sportsman, as you get older, your physique changes, your throw changes a little bit. And that's what you have to cope with. And when you get older, you don't want to go and work out some match. You know, you just want to laze around and watch the TV. And uh, Phil's 55 years old now. I mean, Michael Van Gerwen's, you know, mid-20s. So the advantage should be with Michael and all the others. But Phil Taylor's still in there. He's still sending out the messages. Like he says, you've got to send out messages. And he keeps doing it. I mean, his consistency, leg on leg. When he actually said about Carl Anderson, his form is like this. Phil's heartbeat, as we call it, is like this, along with Michael Van Gogh. And that's what Carl Anderson's got to do. But Phil Taylor's heartbeat of form has been right across the board. And uh, that's why he's so consistent. Now, you mentioned him there, Carl Anderson. A little bit of inconsistency, you could say, has kind of crept into his game over the last 18 months. But we'll get some reaction from him now. He's with Paul Gow. Now, mate, you, uh, you got off to a pretty good start. You just missed a few darts in there that, that sort of got you off track. Yeah, you know, I felt comfortable going from the first leg and I got the first double and I felt good. I felt like I was on a roll. And then I missed that shot in the second in the second leg and Phil took out and um yeah, I felt some yeah, just Phil's aura just came back to so back to the front. 
he's relentless, isn't he? The pressure. Could you feel that pressure? You know, he's just he walks up there and he, he just puts that little bit on you. I was watching the first couple of legs, and um, he, he wasn't throwing too well in the first couple of legs, and I, I felt a bit of ease. And then I dropped off a bit, and Phil does what Phil does, and Phil started hitting more triples, and he put it back onto me. And um, yeah, I f felt it a bit tonight. And Phil just stood here raving reviews about here. He actually just said he'd sponsor you. He reckons you've got that much ability that, that he'd put his own money behind you. That must make you feel good. Do you take something away from tonight? You take, every time you play Phil, you take something away all the time. You know, Phil's a great player, one of the greatest, if the greatest, you know, ever played the game. Um, to play Phil on this stage in front of my home crowd and have them support me the way I did, you always take everything from it. And how about that support? You know, when you walked out, the, you know, the roof lifted off here. They, they just love you. And, uh, you know, you, you got here to this bar and they, they just, they want you to win. They do, you know. If, if I was in the crowd, I'd be doing the same thing. So I just want to say thank you to everyone back out there. And um, next year when they come back, we'll make some more noise. And, and what's for you now? Where are you going to take a bit of a rest? Yeah, I'm off to uh, Rockhampton for about three, four weeks. I spend time with my partner and my son. So uh, happy days. Happy days. Mate, it's been great watching you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we absolutely love seeing him in action here in Australia. The crowd did. They cheered then when he just said thank you and he thanked the crowd as well. It was really, really beautiful. All right. Talk to me.